So with now only a few days until the transfer window opens, let's jump into some transfer rumours. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Plenty to discuss going into today's video. Like I said, just a few days now until the January transfer window goes ahead and opens. If you didn't check out yesterday's video, make sure to go ahead and do so. We do have some championship action going on tonight, so make sure to go over to yesterday's video and leave your score predictions in there. But we are here today to discuss some championship transfer rumours. As always, want to get your guys' thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Where do you think your club needs to be looking into strengthening? And as always, if you do go to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content but without any further ado let's jump into the rumours and we'll start out with Ian Matston who's currently on loan at Coventry from Chelsea now the Ben Chilwell situation could have quite the implication for this loan deal with Chelsea only now having Marcus Alonso as a fit left wing back Ben Chilwell has now been sidelined for the rest of the season which could have an impact on this loan deal in Matston so far this season I think he's done a really good job at Coventry obviously he's been utilised in that left wing back role and um, he's currently fourth in the championship for the most tackles won this season with 57 and other than that red card I think he's adapted really well to life in the championship so far now Chelsea have a few options in terms of what they want to do here they currently have two left wing backs who are out on loan Matston being one of them and they also have Emerson who's out on loan at Leon at this point in time as well so it's looking more than likely that one of those players may end up getting recalled if they don't dip into the transfer window for um, another left back of themselves you know Luca Digne has been linked to Chelsea but that whatever Chelsea decide to do with that will obviously have an impact on what Ma what happens with the rest of Ian Matson's loan spell. I do hope that he is able to stick it out at Coventry for the rest of the season because I think that in terms of his development, this is probably going to be best for him, you know, having a full season at Championship level in a good side like Coventry. But it does seem like there is that option at the moment that Chelsea could recall him come January. Bournemouth centre-half Steve Cook is being heavily linked with a couple of moves to Championship clubs at the moment. Both Nottingham Forest and QPR have been mentioned with this one but as of recording it does seem that QPR are in the driving seat for this transfer interestingly enough he was left out of Bournemouth's most recent match day squad as well which would hint towards a potential move being in the pipelines his contract with Bournemouth is expiring at the end of the season and so would be available for I'd imagine quite the minimal price tag come January he's not played all too much football so far this season either with just three championship appearances and um, albeit he was absolutely brilliant in that game against Fulham and um, when he was just sort of like putting his body on the line and things like that to stop anything going in but uh, no doubt that he's fallen down the pecking order so far this season um, and since Scott Parker's arrival really and what would be interesting about this is that if Bournemouth were willing to let Steve Cook go in the January transfer window then you'd think that they'd be quite confident in keeping hold of Lloyd Kelly who we mentioned on the last transfer room around the video and who's had some links recently to Premier League clubs but you can't imagine that Bournemouth would be willing to lose both of those players and so a departure of a cook looks more than likely to happen. West Brom have been with the move for Freddie Gondola. There have been a few other championship clubs mentioned with this one. We both QPR and Huddersfield also talked about. Now I can't claim to be an expert on this guy. I did a little bit of digging in terms of um, his past career and things like that. He will be available on a free transfer come the January transfer window. He can play anywhere across the forward line, predominantly on the left, but can also play on the right or as a centre forward up front and he's most recently been playing his football in Venezuela. To the big transfer story going around at the moment. Next though, Daryl DK being heavily linked with the move to the Hawthorns and to West Brom. Now this would be an absolutely excellent addition and I think that this transfer, probably on its own, makes West Brom into serious challenges for the top two for the rest of the season. What they've been lacking so far this season has been a real clinical edge going forward. You know, they've not really had much of a problem in creating chances, but in terms of actually taking them, they've been one of, if not the most wasteful sides in the championship so far this season. Someone who's been absolutely clinical at this level before and has worked with Ishmael at Barnsley is Daryl DK and you'd think that he ticks pretty much all the boxes for West Brom. In terms of their style of play and how they like to be quite direct, Daryl DK fits that to a T really. You know, he is quite a physical um, hold-up player. He showed that at Barnsley. He had an 
excellent partnership then with Corley Woodrow. But in terms of his actual finishing ability and those instincts in front of goal, that's something that West Brom have seriously lacked so far this season. We thought that maybe, you know, Jordan Hugel would be able to do a little bit of the work that Daryl DK did for Barnsley last season at West Brom this time around, but that hasn't really worked out so far. And there have been some rumours about him potentially being recalled coming into the January transfer window. But DK would be an absolutely excellent addition in 14 starts for Barnsley last season, seven appearances from the bench. He scored nine goals for them and was an integral part of them ending up making it into the top six. His strike rate in the MLS this season has also been really impressive. 16 starts and three appearances off the bench for Orlando City, scored 11 goals. And he's only 21 years old as well, so has serious scope to be, you know, moulded into a serious striker, not just in the championship, but in the Premier League as well. What's being talked about at the moment is a potential loan deal from now until the end of the season with a view to then make that permanent heading into next season from West Brom. This will be a real signal of intent for West Brom if they manage to get this one over the line. Now I mentioned Keenan Davis in the last transfer room around the video. He's been linked to several championship clubs but West Brom have been another one who have been mentioned in terms of the Aston Villa striker. I'd imagine from West Brom's point of view he'd be like maybe the backup option if they didn't manage to get that Daryl DK deal done and over the line it's more than likely that Keenan Davis ends up somewhere else like we discussed last time. And the other one that may end up being a bit of a backup option but he has been linked to West Brom in the recent few weeks has been Barnsley striker Corley Woodrow. This could be a case of Valerie Ishmael just completely getting the band back together and you know Woodrow, DK, Moa all linking up at West Brom. But you'd imagine with the players that West Brom already have there the sort of you know people who will be playing off Daryl DK if that deal gets done and over the line there wouldn't be all too much of a need for someone like Corley Woodrow, you know, with already having the likes of like Callum Robinson and Carlin Grant. You know, you've then got like Phillips and Diane Garner to come into those positions as well as those wide forwards. Who knows though, it's another option. Peterborough are reportedly in the market for a new goalkeeper come January with Christy Pym agreeing to a loan deal to go out to Stevenage for the rest of the season. Really surprised that he ends up um, in League 2. Very surprised that a League 1 club um, didn't take him on. Obviously he started the season out as Peterborough's number 1, but I think a bit of a falling out there behind the scenes has led to that eventual loan deal. Reportedly Peterborough had a bid knocked back for Will Norris who's currently at Burnley. Not sure whether there's actually all too much truth in this one but it's been talked about. Swansea striker Morgan Whittaker looks set to join Lincoln on a loan deal for the rest of the season as Swansea look to get the youngster a little bit more game time. 20 years old, not played all too much football so far this season. Uh, mostly he's played in the League Cup where he's actually done quite well for Swansea scoring three goals but in terms of championship football so far this season yet to start a match he's had six appearances coming on from the bench where he's played just a total of 76 minutes so far this season. Brighton forward Aaron Connolly has been linked with a move to Middlesbrough on a loan deal for the rest of the season. I think this rumour coming about because he followed Middlesbrough on Instagram recently but there does seem to be in some there does seem to be something in this deal. He um, once again hasn't played all too much football for Brighton in the Premier League so far this season a total of just 155 minutes for them. Scored a couple goals in the League Cup though and to be honest over the last couple of years hasn't played all too much football and has gradually sort of fallen down the pecking order there. Still a young striker though, only 21 years old. I think we knew from when Chris Wilder first came in really that Middlesbrough would be after some more uh, firepower in this department. So yeah, this very much looks like a deal which could be on. Reading's John Swift is a wanted man at this point in time. There's been interest from the Premier League, Leeds United being one club who have been talked about at the moment, but also from some clubs abroad as well. Clubs from Turkey and Saudi Arabia have also been interested in the Reading midfield. Now Reading face quite a different situation come January with what to do with John Swift because his contract is expiring at the end of the season at the moment it doesn't look all too likely that he will be extending with them I think he's already turned down the contract extension actually but uh, so obviously Reading face losing him on a free come the end of the season having said that Swift is absolutely vital to this Reading side and you know if they were to lose him in January there's a serious possibility that Reading could end up going down. He's been the centrepiece of that side so far this season, scoring eight goals and picking up nine assists as well. Reading have said that it would take serious money uh, to go ahead and let go of Swift in this January transfer window with how important he actually is to the side at the moment. But with him just having a few le months left on his contract at Reading, it's a tough situation given their financial um, situation at the club at the moment. As a free agent at the end of the season, Swift would have, you know, plenty of offers, I'm sure about that. 
that. But this could be a story which continues to develop as the weeks in January continue to go on, I think. But guys, there we have it. That will wrap it up for today's quick transfer rumour roundup video. As always, if you're using any rumours that we didn't mention in today's video, make sure to get them in the comments down below and we'll go ahead and discuss them next time. I'm sure that as we get into the January window, we'll have a bunch more rumours to go ahead and talk about. I think that in this next sort of week or so, the rumours are only going to go on and continue to ramp up. But as always, guys, if you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Apart from that, guys, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.